Hello once again and welcome to the Amalgamated with Christ Church where the purpose same remains the same to bring people back into fellowship with God through Jesus Christ. All right, so we want to look at Luke 14. Today we want to look at Luke chapter 14, 15 to 24. Luke 14. This is one of those parables that Jesus spoke. It's about the parable of the great banquet. Yep, Jesus spoke many parables, many parables, and, um, you know, a parable is a drawing in, as usual, as I like to say, and for those who are near to take something and to go forth with it, right? Now, though this is a parable of the, the, <clears throat> the great banquet, I want you to look at it from this perspective. The priorities of life, because right in this parable, you will see um, where invitations were sent, but people were too busy. Forget that they were invited. And many of us today, we are so busy, we are caught up in all aspects of life, forgetting who we are. We're too busy to focus on what really matters. We're too busy to focus on our own salvation. We're too busy to focus on our family. We're too busy to focus on things that matters. Many times we're just focused on things that's just frivolous, things that, that has no meaning. You know, we see it as important, but when you really look at it in the grand scheme of things, it's, it's just nothing, a bunch of nothing. You ever hear people always busy? They're always busy. They're always busy. They're always busy with a bunch of nothing. Yeah, I, I, I'm just so busy. I'm, I'm, I'm busy here. I'm busy there. I'm so busy in ministry. I'm so busy at work. I'm so busy everywhere. But just a bunch of busy bodies who not really doing nothing. And the whole thing is many of us do not know how to prioritize. And so opportunity is going to pass us by, including salvation. You see, many of us declare that we are Christians, and many of us declare, oh, we live in a Christian country, and we like this, and we love that, but yet still we do not know how to prioritize. Thus, we are going to look at a part of the great banquet. Let me summarize it for you. I said Luke 14, 15 to 24. What you have here is that Jesus told this parable. He said, a certain man... A certain man gave a great supper, and this man invited several people to come to this banquet. And I'm going to tell you this, many of these people accepted the invitation, but when the time come, when it was there for them to come, they suddenly find excuse, they got to do this, they got to do that. Let's look at the scripture. If you look at Luke 14 and verse 16, it says, And then he said to him, A certain man gave a great supper and invited many. He invited many. Look. He invited many people. Right? The scripture did not tell us the time between when the invitation was sent and when the feast was ready. But he invited many people. So imagine you are planning an event. This is January. You're planning the event for December of this year. You buy the food. You rent the place. You do everything. And you send your invitation out to many people. And everybody says, oh, yes, we are coming. The RSVP, we are coming, we are coming. So you spend all your time preparing. And when the time comes, you send a reminder. Because you're a good person. Because you love people. Because you don't want anyone to get left out. So you send them a reminder to say, hey, come. That's what happened. In verse 17, and he sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, come, for all things are now ready. All things are now ready. And look at this now. Verse 18, but they all with one accord began to make excuse. Now, let me make something very clear. I want to tell you what and who Jesus was addressing and related to you in today's day principle. Jesus was relating this parable and saying that 
The Jews were the one that rejected Jesus Christ. Right? They rejected him. And because of the rejection, then the doors were open to what they call the Gentiles. Now, in today's day principle, it is still the same. Jesus has invited many of us to salvation. Many of us have accepted it. And, 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 and we, we declare that we are coming. We were once very nice, squeaky clean. But suddenly priorities shift. Things are too slow, so we, 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 we cannot do this thing anymore. And so what do we start doing now? We start to put in off what we have accepted. That's what's going on in verse 18. They all began and one accord to make excuse. Listen to this. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of ground, or I bought some property, and I must go and see it. The next one said to him, let them say I asked to have me excuse, polite. Then the next one said, I bought five yoke of oxen. He bought some cows. Right? And I want to be excused. And then the next one said, I have married a wife. I'm glad he said I've married a wife. Today, yeah, you know, know how that goes. But he said, I married a wife, and so I want to be excused. Those are lame excuses. Today we have a bunch of people who like to present lame excuses. May I say this? Lame excuse. We're a bunch of Christians or a bunch of people in society that are very lame. We are lame. The invitation went out. And we must thank God that he's not like man. Because if I was the one that sent the invitation and you rejected, I closed my door. I'm not going to invite you again. But this door is still open. So can you imagine as I was saying, you prep everything. You buy all this food. You spend all your money. You hire, you hire catering company. You hire musicians. You hire everything. And now is the time for the great banquet to take place. 500 people RSVP. And then you just do a courtesy reminder. Hey, are you coming? Oh, man. Oh, snap. As they like to say. I, 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 I just bought some properties. I got, you got one year. I got to go and see. You bought it already. That means you must have done your due diligence. You must have seen it already. You've done that already. You've done your home inspection. You've done everything already. But you just want to find some lame excuse not to show up. So you say, oh, I must go see it. No, why couldn't you go and see it tomorrow? The property is there. The property is not going anywhere. Then you come again with your foolishness. I, I, I just bought some, some, some oxen. I got to go and try them out. Oh, I just got married. Your wife isn't going anywhere. Lame excuse. We're full of lame excuse in society. That's what's happening today. We do not know how to prioritize, and so we are rejecting what truly matters to us. And so oftentimes, many of us tend to neglect God. We claim we love us some Jesus, but we neglect him. We claim we want a revival in our soul, but we neglect him. We claim that it's a Christian country, but we neglect him. Every time we get in some trouble, oh, it's only God, God over everything. But we neglect him. We refuse his invitation daily. And we still expect him to show up and do good things for us. What we call good. And when things don't go our way, we murmur, oh, where, where is God? God is still there. But you've rejected the invitation and so you have no peace and so you can't sleep and so you're miserable in your life. Because you fail to realize and you fail to acknowledge that an invitation was sent to you. And because you fail to do that, it simply means that you're not a good steward. You can't prioritize what comes first. I am tired. You're supposed to go to church. I am tired. I work the entire week. So I got to lay down here. It's so funny. We travel and we come home. The flight land at 4 o'clock and we drive two miles, I mean two hours away from the airport to our house and we got to go to work at 7 o'clock. None of us talk about we're tired then. 
We drink 50 gallons of coffee and do everything we got to do to go on the floor. And then we are perky and we are happy. Because we got to make that money. You don't tell your boss you're tired. You dare not to call in sick because you have no other sick days left. But many of us feel it. We can just... You're not spiting the preacher. I don't care. I preach, I preach to the chair. But you talk about, I'm tired. I can't go to church. I have too much happening right now. Someone is giving me problem at home. So I can't go to church. People giving you a problem on the job, but you do want to, you, you still go to the job. Miserable as you may be, but you're still going to the job. You hate the job, but you're still going to the job. But God who we can't see, God who is all powerful, God who we claim that we love, we like to put him first. It's insulting. Look at the frivolous excuse that they give. And we got to look at it as what we do too. I just, I, 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 I just bought some property. You forget that the function is so important. It was, you were invited by an eye official. Jesus invites you to you. But you're going to say that you are tired. When you are down and out and suffering. People treating you badly. You ball. You, you sit at the church door. You want the door to be open. Seven days a week you wish church was open. It's like during COVID. The amalgamate with the Christ church just grew like this overnight. Online. Well, it grew. It grew. Not online. It grew. Thousands. Everybody want to have a... Can we have a branch of tack in our country? Can we have a branch of tack in our community? Church growing, 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 growing. Because of COVID, suddenly everybody realized that they should affiliate with God. And as soon as it blew over, everybody back to their old stamping ground. Stripper gone back to stripping. Thieves gone back to thiefing. People who work gone back to work. People who sit on the roadside and idle gone back to sit and idle. Because everywhere is free again. But when you are confined to a little box, that's the time you realize you want God. That's the time this thing was important to you. The parable of the great banquet highlights several key points that we must take heed to. Invitation to salvation has been sent to each and every one of us. Again, look at the scripture. Luke 14 verse 16. A certain man gave a great supper and invited many. This man did not have to invite anyone. He could have been selective. He could have just said, I'm going to confine it to this set of people right here. But he sent the invitation to everyone. Next point. The invitation have been sent. Many of us are not showing up because we have lame excuses. We often reject Jesus Christ due to stuff. Because I got to get it. I got to make it. Many of us have been trying to make it for years. You've been trying to make it from your young. Now you're old. Now you must figure it out. You will not be a millionaire. You will never ever be a millionaire. Many of us will die broke. And that's just the reality of the situation. And so we better prioritize what is most important to us. You see, you have to understand that when you prioritize and you accept the invitation to salvation, there are certain things that comes with it when you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. There's a thing that called peace that surpasses all understanding. That even when you have a whole lot of money, it is elusive because money can't buy happiness, money can't buy peace. Many people with money, they're trying to buy happiness, but they can never buy happiness. Doesn't matter if you want to make a toilet or the goal. It's going to get boring to you. Doesn't matter if you want to go to the, to the deepest part of the ocean, which we see many billionaires have gone to. It's going to get boring to you. Then you're going to go out of space, which you see many men with money have done. It's going to be boring to you. Then you no longer want to be a man. You want to be a woman. You no longer want to be a woman. You're going to be a man. It's going to get boring to you. 
then life will just have no meaning to you because you're going to say, well, I've done everything. No, you have not done everything. The person who, who, who understand who they are, that they were created in the image of God, created to serve God, they will never get born because their priority is God. Okay. And the steps of a good man are ordered by God. So as long as God is ordering your steps, he will always show you what to do next. But if you rely on your own understanding and try to figure out what your next step is, then life is going to be boring to you. You say, preacher, does that mean I should not plan for school? I should not get... No, 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 no. We're going to clarify all of that. We're going to clarify all of that. But our priorities in this life must be such that we understand who we are. We are dependent on God. And most of us are failing because we reject the notion. We don't think we need any God in our life. We don't need no God in our society. Let's take God out of society. And as soon as something happened, then everybody's talking about why did God allow it to happen. God never allow anything to happen unless you, because you have the choice. You're saying, wait a minute. If God knows everything, why did he just stop me? Then you'll be upset with God and say, God, why did you stop me from doing it? You see, we don't complain about things until it go wrong. For example, if we, if we love to drink two-fifths of vodka per day, which is those two big bottles with a little round handle, if we like to drink it every day, we don't see anything wrong with it. When we are young and we are nice, we call it, we say we're getting stoned. We say we're enjoying ourselves. But if someone says you need to stop it because you're going to get serious of the liver, oh, you're just fighting against me. You're a blocker. You're a hater. But then you wake up one morning. This is how, this is how, this is how liver cirrhosis takes. This is how it happened, right? Sometimes it creeps up suddenly. But I remember when I used to see patients, right? One day they're all drinking, having a good time dancing to the music in the ballroom and then they go back to the hotel room and then they, all their eyes are yellow, their face just get yellow, everything get yellow overnight. That's how, then the jaundice just go boom. And then people run into the hospital, what happened? Oh, your liver is cirrhotic. You got end stage liver disease and then they start crying, why did God allow it to happen? If God had intervened, you'd have hated God. But God sent other people to say, hey, stop drinking. You said they're fighting against you. You do not want, they don't want you to enjoy yourself. And so what did God do? God gave man free will to choose. And the good thing is that God is so good that God tell man the truth. God, God, God introduced man to both good and evil, and God said, don't choose evil. Yes, and where is it in the scripture? Go back to the beginning. Go back to Genesis chapter 2, and look at verse 16. And the Lord God commanded man, saying, of every tree of the God you may freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. You see how fair God is? God said to man, for in the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. So God already made it clear that, listen, you have good, you have evil. But I'm telling you, don't choose evil. But guess what? Evil is sweet. <laughs> I remember when I was a knee, not knee deep. I remember when my whole body was immersed in evil. It was sweet. No one could tell me to change my nasty ways. It was sweet. It was so sweet. I didn't want no church people talking to me about nothing. Keep your God. Keep your church. Give me my silver and gold. You keep your Jesus. And that's what was said. Because my priorities were screwed up. And that's the reason when the invitation was sent. The invitation of the great banquet. Everybody was excited at first. Because Luke 14 and 16... When the man sent the invitation out, I am theorizing, the Bible didn't say that, but if they didn't want to show up, they would have said from the beginning, you know what, I don't want to show up. But they accepted the invitation, and when the stuff was ready, then they're going to find excuse. Oh, I just bought some, I just bought some land. I just got married. I just got some access. So what does all of that mean? 
We all have been invited by Jesus Christ to salvation. Most of us who declare that we are Christians, we have accepted this invitation. But because our priorities are screwed up, now we are getting some lame excuse. I'm in church too long and I want to be a superstar. I want to be a big singer. So I got to go out there and make it. Because you're in the church and you see people dancing and shouting and screaming. You think that you have made it. And so you run from the church, transition into the secular realm when you're a huge failure. But even, even if you had a Grammy, if you sell multi, uh, double platinum, you'd still be in a failure. Because in the sight of God, you've gone against his will. But I'm saying this to you, even if you were to make it, which if you count on one to ten, hardly anybody working. It's like everybody wants to be a basketball star. Everybody, do you know, do you know the probability of you making it? One percent. One percent. And you're not just competing with people in your little city. You may be the best in the city, but you factor in the county. You may be the best in the county, then you factor in the state. You mean the best in the state, they factor in the country. You mean the best in the country, but they factor in the entire world because everybody want to make it. And so it's the elusive pursuit of happiness that's causing us to prioritize wrongly. So not because you have been invited and you have accepted the salvation, it means you're going to make it in heaven. That's the gist of the story. That's the gist of the story. The scripture tells us Jesus Christ came for all. Jesus Christ came first to the Jewish people who rejected him. So thus Jesus was given this, this parable. And look at all this lame excuse now. Let's get into it. What does it mean? Luke 14 verse 18. But they all with one accord. Everybody having the same lame excuse. The first said to him, I bought a piece of ground and I must go and see. Bought a piece of ground. What does that mean? Today it means that we are just busy with stuff. We are busy with stuff. We are busy with work. We are busy with career. We are busy with areas and preacher. Does that mean I shouldn't go to work? Does that mean I shouldn't focus on career? No, that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying to you is that you must prioritize God. You must prioritize Jesus he is the author and finisher of your faith, of all faith. You see, most of us are so busy with stuff that we have become covetous, not even knowing it. Back in Jamaica, they used to say, you got, your eye, you got a red eye. Your eye is red for everybody's stuff. You're laughing, but your eyes are red. You, have, you, 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 you say, I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy for you. And though you're smiling, your teeth are clinched. You're shaking the person's hand, but you don't even want to hold it. I'm so happy for you. And that's your attitude. And so Jesus said this in Luke 12. Listen, verse 15. And he said to them, take heed and beware of covetousness. Reason? For one's... Life does not consist in the abundance of things it possess. Warning, warning, warning. Your life does not, it is does, it's not about the abundance of stuff. We're all going to die and we're all going to leave stuff behind. Doesn't matter what you accumulate today. You're going to die and you're going to leave all your stuff behind. You see, those, you see those favorite china that you didn't want anyone to touch? You don't even want to take them out at Christmas. You see, as soon as you're dead, they call the thrift store. My mom have a bunch of old stuff here. I don't want these old stuff. You see that precious wedding gown that you've been saving? But this is going to be my daughter. Your daughter is going to use it for a doormat. You see that favorite, that favorite sofa that you're saving, you have it wrapped in plastic and no one can sit. That favorite room that people can only walk by and peep in like this. As soon as you're dead, they're going to throw a big party and some guy's going to be sitting there smoking his cigarette. Putting his food, having his pizza, ripping the plastic. 
You're dead. You see that big house that you want? The big house that you're running for? Here comes a time when you're only confined to one room. And all you're going to be doing, you're going to wish you had someone to take you out of the bed in that one room that you're confined to. People living in a house and you don't even know it. So your life is not, cons is, 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 is not about the abundance of stuff. Amen. Prioritize life. Prioritize life. How do you prioritize life? How do you prioritize life? The scripture tells us. But we do not love the scripture because the scripture is too truthful to us. The scripture says in Luke 6, I mean Matthew 6 and verse 33. We all know that. Seek first the kingdom of God. Seek for, That is how you prioritize. Seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you. Do not worry about what tomorrow is going to do. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Oh, I'm just worried about, oh, can you change it? I've never seen any of us worry about tomorrow and change the outcome of tomorrow. Your life is not all about stuff. How many millionaires you have known? Today. Millionaire, billionaire, flossing, dancing, drinking, pouring champagne. I remember growing up, I see guys just busting liquor and just washing the street. I'm like, wow. That's what money do to man, make man into fools, make man into idiots. Just pouring liquor on the street. I've seen people doing this foolish thing or they're doing champagne baths. People's birthday and you just stand in the middle and everybody just come and just pouring champagne on you. Pouring champagne on you. Pouring gallons and gallons of champagne. I'm like, look, a fool on his money will surely depart. Your life is not all about stuff. So I say to you, prioritize God. Don't talk about your stuff. We talk about our stuff too much. Making excuses. I just bought a piece of ground and I must go and see it. Meaning you're too busy with the stuff in your life so you can't see the priority. Prioritize God. Look at what the another lame excuse. Look at, at verse 19. Another said, I bought five yoke of oxen and I'm going to test them. You mean to tell me you're going to buy some oxen, oxen, big cows. For those of you who don't, have never seen an ox. Huge. They're from the bovine species. A female is a cow. So, big cows. You tell me you buy these, you buy these yoke of oxen. Just buy them. You see the lame excuse? Because we're going to investigate before we do our investment. So he's saying I bought five yoke. Meaning, is work. is place in society. That's what, it, that's what that means. Our work, our place in society is more important. And so we have to focus on our social status, our social economic status, which school we go to, who we hang out with. We do all of that. I don't want to go to church with those lame people anymore because I'm too sophisticated. But it wasn't that. It wasn't that when nothing was going on for you. It wasn't that. The little lame preacher you beat on the door. The preacher could be a janitor. You be, used to beat on the door. Can you pray for me? Every day you want prayer. Every day you complain. They do you. They do you. Come, come on, come on, come on, come on, pray for me. Come on, cast out demons for me. No, you were just depressed. They do me, they do me, they this, they that. But as suddenly, as you get some money in your hand, now your priority is on your is on your on, on, on your social economic status. You got to be seen with the right crowd. You got to be smelling good. You got to be at the right table. You got to you got to have the right friends around you. I don't want to I don't want to go to the church anymore because that man is a janitor at my work and I can't be seen with that man because I'm the manager. I can't be the manager at work and he's my janitor. But at church, he's my pastor. He's more qualified than you spiritually. Jesus Christ is the one that called and put man into position for he himself gave some to be. Not you, not your credentials. 
Not because you have an MBA or whatever it is, it means you're qualified to be the preacher. And many people now in society, because of, because of, because of their worldly status, they just feel like they're going to walk in the church and they're going to get certain position. It can't be. It can't be. Prioritize your life. How is your spiritual health? How is your spiritual health? Many of us are failing in our spiritual health because we do not prioritize our life. We're looking too much on our yoke of oxen. Our spiritual health is going to shambles because we're dedicated to, we're dedicated to, to society, but not to God. Not to the morals set by God. And that's the reason why we embrace everything, anything goes. We do not accept the doctrine of Christ anymore because if we do it, we're going to be seen. We're going to be seen at extreme. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? If you say to someone, I do not support same-sex marriage. Oh, you're so extreme. If you say to someone, I do not support abortion. Oh, you're so extreme. Everything you are extreme now. If you say, I don't, I don't support, I don't support the little six-year-old saying that he is a girl. You are so extreme. But you know what the funny thing is? We are so stupid. So our excuses are so lame. It is so lame. I don't support this, you don't support that. It is my truth. There's no truth. Everybody have your own variation of truth. That's the reason it's a big fat lie we're all living. You got your truth, I got my truth, everybody got their truth. But the truth is, the truth never changes. The truth is, the truth stands. And when you get in trouble, you run back. You want to run back. One of these days, we're going to be running and the doors will be closed. Are you figuring, are you trying to figure out what's going on? We do not prioritize. We're just working with the flow. Our priorities most times are not right. It is so weak. We are lame. We got to do better. We got to do better. We are too lame. Too much freedom. So we're turning stupid with the freedom that we have. We do not love the freedom in the spirit. We love the freedom in the world. So prioritize life. I'm telling you to prioritize life. We don't like to fellowship. And so we're suddenly falling away. You wonder, what, you wonder why people can just quote all sorts of things and tell you that it is scripture. Even bringing in new age stuff. And you're accepting it and talking about you're a Christian. You're not a Christian. That's why everybody who now, and most people now who claim they are Christians are talking foolishness about love and light. Where are you talking about love and which light? Don't love and light me in Jesus' name. Rubbing stone, burning a little incense, burning a little sage, talking about you want to attract good energy. Where is that in the scripture? Where is that stupidness? Where is it coming from? It's all seeping into us because we do not know how to prioritize life. We're, we're neglecting the invitation to salvation. We're neglecting the invitation to the great banquet. When you have such an invitation, your job is to stay close to people, stay close to like-minded believers. We don't want a fellowship, we want to avoid church. And so we're becoming cold, we're becoming insipid. Some insipid Christian. We have many insipid Christians. You always wonder why I beat up on Christians. Judgment begins at the house. We are becoming some insipid Christians. Do not know how to defend ourselves. Do not know how to stand up for nothing. Thinking if we fit into society, they're going to love us. They're not going to love you. You're not one of them. They know who they are. They know their own. It's like if you have never been, if you, you move away from somewhere. And you've gone back and you still think you, you fit in. You're walking down the street and trying to blend in. Trying to be incognito. They know you're not there anymore. You don't live there anymore. They know you. Prioritize life. Jesus said this in Revelation chapter 3, verse 16. So then because you're lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. 
Many of us think that because we have a little substance, two little pennies rubbing together, and we're talking about we're rich. We don't even know what riches is. We are, we are rich. Many of us believe we're rich because we have some cheesy, cheap TV on our wall. Talking about we are rich. We are rich. It's no, it's, it's no novelty anymore. Talking about you have KitchenAid furniture. You have KitchenAid appliance. Nobody care about that. We're talking recently. Went into a guy's office and he had wolf. Wolf thing in his, in his employee's lounge. Are you coming here to go cheesy KitchenAid talking about you rich? You've made it. You made Who cares what you have? I don't care. As long as, the, as long as the temperature remains constant and the food is being cooled. Prioritize life. We don't like to fellowship. And that's the reason these cheesy, lame excuses. Look again at Luke 14. Look at verse 20. Still another said, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. Ooh, married a wife. What does that mean? <laughs> mean we're concerned with our future and our heritage. Many of us in society, we're only concerned with our present future, our present life. Many Christians today are not even concerned about heaven. They don't think about heaven anymore. What's, it, what's, it, what's all of this? If you're going to become a Christian and you don't think about heaven, stay out there, man. Have a good time. Enjoy yourself. Many Christians only partake into this thing that they call Christianity because they believe that they are going to make it in life. May I tell you something? Do you know you have many poor Christians? They may be poor physically, but in spirit they're rich. They're very happy. They have a peace that surpasses all understanding. And some of us with our money, we are so miserable. Our, our, our life in our house, we're miserable. We don't want to go home. We spend all day delaying at work because we, we don't want to go home. Because the moment you hit the house, the moment you drive in your driveway, your face starts to frown. You put your hand on the doorknob. It, 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 your, your shoulders drop. Are you... <sighs> Prioritize life. You go in and you wish you weren't there, but you got to keep up the facade. Prioritize life. Who are you? Were you created in the image of God? If you were, then prioritize life, man. Prioritize life. Talking about your future. Oh, I'm married. I have a wife. What does that mean? Too much of us are concerned with just our heritage and our earthly future. It means nothing if we're not seeking eternal life. It means nothing if we're not seeking eternal life. And that's the reason a lot of people are attracted to, to churches that preach nothing but name it and claim it. People just want to go to church to have a good time. What's the difference with you and the atheists? I read one article, one atheist guy said, we're just like Christians. We go to church every week, not church, we gather every Sunday and we have feel good, feel good sessions. And we play feel good music. And we give feel good talk. Many churches now, they just give feel good music. Feel good talk. Feel good session. Everybody coming out high-fiving, it was, church was good today. What did the pastor talk about? Oh, empower, it was such a, uh, it, it empower me. Empower me. I want to just, ooh, 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 man, I'm so empowered. Not empowered in the Holy Spirit. Jesus said this again, Mark 8. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just give you the scriptures. Mark 8, verse 36. For what will it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What is it going to profit you if you gain the entire world and lose your soul? Concern with your future. I got to make it at all costs. Concern with your heritage. Concern with your heritage. It means nothing without God. It means nothing without Jesus Christ. Nothing. Constructing your future without Jesus Christ is similar to us building a project illegally. 
as Christians. Many of us are illegally building. It's like, we're, we're, it's like our hands are dipped in blood. You're saying, preacher, that's graphic. No, it's not graphic because if you're a child of God, you're supposed to depend on God. You're supposed to have a relationship with God. You can't stray to too much God business, man. Preacher, why you always have to talk about God? Because that's what I do. As a Christian, you should always talk. Christian. Christian, followers of Jesus Christ. Christians don't. I've never seen such a fallacy. Many Christians don't want to talk about Christ anymore. Because if we talk about Christ, we're going to look too lame. You I, Listen, listen. The scripture says Abacoc. Abacoc. Oh, yeah, there's such a book in the Bible. Abacoc. Chapter 2. Listen to this, verse 12. No many of you have never heard this before. Woe to him who builds a town with bloodshed, who established a city by iniquity. Behold, is it not the Lord of hosts that the people labors to feed the fire? And you go on and go on and go on. But the point is that we are trying to build a heritage. We are trying to build a future. And I said to you, it is like, it's a simile I'm comparing to. It's like illegally building. It is like you're doing things of bloodshed. And so the scripture is saying, woe to you. Woe to you who build your life without Jesus Christ. Woe to you who think you can do it on your own. Woe to you who think you have made it. Who think you have made it. It is all me, 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 me. It is all me. I remember once upon a time when I got a little favor from God. Got a little favor from God. And I started doing some investment. And I suddenly, suddenly, everybody says, so how did you do it? And I said, well, you know, I did it this and I did it that. Mm -hmm. And suddenly I was, I never realized that I was homeless until recently. Once upon a time I was homeless. Do you guys know I was homeless? I was a homeless man, but I never realized it. I did not have a residence. And someone gave me a room to sleep in a nursing home. Meaning I was homeless, it was a mine. I'll tell you the story. <laughs> and so I was homeless, but I didn't realize I was homeless. Because I was caught up in trying to build my future. My this, my heritage. And so most of us are going to hem up, and we're going to end up homeless and don't even know we're homeless. Woe to you who establish a city. Woe to you who establish any aspect of your life without building on Jesus Christ. Don't you know that our priorities are in Christ? Don't you know that we must, we must seek first the kingdom of God? Don't you know that if you're building in Christ, you cannot be concerned about what society is saying? Don't you know that you have to, you have to, you have to, you have to be set apart? Don't you, don't you know that you have to fellowship with like-minded believers? But most of us, because we want that facade, we want to be welcomed by the wicked people, what are the wicked people in society, so you do anything to fit in. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 17 says, Therefore, come out from among them, come out from among them, and be separated, said the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. I will receive you. Meaning, invitation is open. Come on to Jesus Christ. Priorities of life. We must act now the salvation to salvation. Invitation to salvation is out for all of us. Time for repentance. You're saying, preacher man, you beat up everyone that's within Christ. No. I'm not beating you up. I'm just giving you a warning. I'm like an arrow. I'm shouting it out so you can hear. Come on back. Those of you who have never been there, it's the same as for you. Your priorities are all screwed up. That's the reason we have been, we're doing so much things and we still can't get it right. We, still, we try everything in life and we can't get it right. I was talking to a brother recently and he's just smiling and happy, feeling sweet. He said, man. And the brother always said, man. Why didn't anyone, why didn't I know about this thing for such a long time? Why didn't I know? 
You see those signs when I used to sing when the brother used to talk about give me Jesus and I used to tell him that I don't want Jesus. I used to tell him I want silver and gold. I got a lot of silver and gold. But all those silver and gold have vanished away. It's all gone. I still, have, I still have many friends searching for silver and gold, searching to get ahead in life. Many of us are searching to get ahead in life, but do not know that all we need to do is prioritize. It would be a, it, it, it's, such a, it's, it's such an enlightenment. Once you sit down and you prioritize life, you will see that everything that we're chasing, as, as, as Solomon said, is meaningless. Vanity, vanity, all is vanity. You will see it. Those of us who love women, thinking we can finish women, you can't. Those of you who love men, you can't. Those of you who love money, there's no ending to zero. Hmm. I was reading an article yesterday, and there was um, three or four men. They were saying to be on track to be billionaire, trillionaires. Right? So a trillion, trillion years, a billion, billion. Richest man in the world have approximately 255 billion, right? So that man is slated to be a trillionaire by 2025, the end of 2025. Another one by 2026 and another one by 2028. Trillionaires. Many world economies, not even billion. Trillionaires. There's no ending to zeros. So if you think chasing after all these things is going to make you happy, I'm going to tell you this. Chasing after everything else except Jesus Christ, you're going to pierce your soul through with many sorrows. Many men and women have, worked, have gotten up regretting the decisions they have made in their life. Chasing after everything except God, it's not worth it. Where is God when I need him? He's right here. But you, what the problem many of us have is, is that we do not believe we need him every day. We need God on demand. Only when we're sick, we decide that we need us some God. Only when things are going hard, we decide that we need some God. When we fail in school, we decide we need God. Have you, it's, a, it's, 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 a, it's, it's the craziest thing. People wait until things are right there. Everything is going to topple. Is it that they are sick? Ah, we're not worried about a little flu. That's okay. But we hear that we have some cancers and everybody drawn to God. When we hear that we're going to lose a leg, everybody drawn to God. When we hear that the man and the woman is going to leave us, everybody drawn to God. We hear about they're going to evict us, everybody drawn to God. When you wasted all your semesters in school, this is the big one I like because I used to witness this. You waste all your semesters in school. And you have one exam. And if you don't get a hundred on that exam, a perfect hundred, you're, you're kicked out. You got to do the program. Then you draw to God. Are you fast and pray? You go and seek prayer. Even if you get a 99, it's not good enough. Believe me, I've seen, I've seen it. You don't, it's not good enough. And when you get that hundred, you shout and you praise God. But when you move on to the other grade, you forget God. Because our priorities are all messed up. I'm going to say this to you. Stick to God. Stick to Christ. Stick to Christ. I'm not promising you anything. I'm not God. The only thing I know is that you will promise eternal life. That's all. I, I'm like the Apostle Paul. I don't know anything. This is all I know. You've been, practiced, you, you, you've been promised eternal life. Stick to Jesus Christ. Amen. Listen, preacher, you mean that I can't enjoy myself? Sure you can enjoy yourself. I enjoy myself. You, you said I can't go anywhere. Sure you can go somewhere. I go places. You say I can't laugh. Do I look like I'm boring? Do I look like I'm not always smiling? The problem is when you prioritize and you see how sweet it is to walk to a fellowship with Jesus Christ, guess what? Then you see the priorities. You laugh. When you laugh at that time, your laugh will be like, <laughs> people wondering, what's wrong with him? Why is he laughing? So because he has a peace that surpasses all understanding. You got people with no bills in the world, nothing to pay. They can't even smile. Priorities aren't right. 
priorities must be right. It's time for man and woman everywhere to repent. It's time for us to all repent. If we have not done so, now is the time. Jesus has come. Invitation has sent. And so the scripture says right here, For whoever call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. No money, no power, no position can save you from eternal damnation. It's only Jesus Christ. And I tell you something. That's the reason when a true believer in Christ. Have you ever seen a true believer in Christ when they have transitioned on to the next life? And you look at the shell that's left behind. Have you seen the, the smile on that shell's face? And you're thinking like, what's going on? What's going on? I remember, I, I, I tell you, I went to my grandmother's funeral. I was seeing not that, but this one just stood out to me. And that shell, because it wasn't her, she isn't there anymore. And that shell of a woman had a smile. You ever seen Batman movie with the smile of the Joker? I'm telling you, I don't, don't matter if they were trying to, that face would just go back smiling. But there's a peace that comes when you know that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. A peace that money can't buy. A peace that position can't buy. A peace that social economic status will never get you. A peace, it doesn't matter about who you know, you will never get it. There's a peace that comes only with a relationship. And if you want that peace, Jesus Christ can give you that peace today. No one else can give you that peace. That peace is now. The time is now. Time for repentance is now. Now. No, time for repentance and, uh, you know, God will take care of the rest. Amen? Amen, Amen man. I, ju I just love it.